Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go? No, that's the question that I myself have to answer in regards to do I go try to improve my time to get deeper into the pro class for the multi-GP nationals competition or do I hope that I fall and stay where I'm at and go into the sportsman class? If this was blackjack, I might be tempted to stay where I'm at in a comfortable position at 182 because more than likely I will fall into the sportsman class in another 20 spots. Should I stay or should I go now? Now, many people have often said, probably self-proclaimed, that The Clash, who sang that song, is the should only I band that matters. Now, in the drone racing world, whether you're talking about DRL, you know, DR1, or any of these spectator class races that are televised all across the world, everyone knows that the multi-GP nationals is the only race that matters. Should I stay or should I go now? John here, guys, and today we're talking about the 2019 multi-GP drone racing championships and specifically about the global qualifier. That's right, there's been a lot of changes on how the multi-GP global qualifier system is gonna work to seed people into the races that will occur at nationals. And the real big question is, should I stay or should I go now? Not should I attend the race, but should I intend to have my position as somewhat of an average flyer um, to have a better chance of getting more laps, more packs per mile traveled by trying to land myself in the sportsman class versus the pro class. So if you haven't been following updates to the MultiGP and how the structure for 2019 is gonna go, there are no longer gonna be regional finals. The global qualifier track that is an awesome track. It has some elements that have been designed in right here in Houston, like Matt's boobs, and some also some very unique and challenging other things in there, making it truly a unique and challenging course. So the strategy though, that one might employ is based on how people are gonna qualify for that race. So because there is no regional finals, your ranking in that global qualifier will determine whether or not you qualify for nationals. Now, this year, there's actually gonna be two separate races held on two weekends next to each other. I believe it's in November in Central Florida. Now, the way it's gonna work is the top 200 pilots will be considered pro class. And I believe they expect that some of those 200 pilots may not be able to attend I'm guessing they're expecting somewhere between 100 and 150, and then they will do a qualifying system, get that down, and then run mains. Mains are bracket style racing. So let's say they're gonna have the top 64 of those participate in the mains. That would mean the last eight of those 64 pilots would fly against each other. The top two or top three, depending on how it's gonna work, would then move up to the next main and you would start at say, you know, F and then you would move up and eventually you'd have C, B and then A mains, which are considered the finals. Now, this year they're also having a sportsman class. I think they're recognizing how big the racing community is getting and in order to accommodate more people um, and not just kind of have them fly a few packs um, in order to qualify and then push them on to they're gonna have a totally separate event the weekend before that's gonna be the sportsman class that's gonna be places 200 to 300 so the other big change for this year is instead of a cumulative total of laps counting towards your time you are in the global qualifier system gonna have your best three laps at any period during that event is gonna count towards your time so my time is three laps in 55 seconds uh, 55.17 seconds I believe and that puts me currently at spot 182. Now, the interesting thing was when I first ran the global qualifier, I actually was a few seconds slower and I was ranked at 158 at that time. Now, I had to employ a strategy 
do I hope that I fall those 42 spots and end up at the very top of the sportsman class? Or do I try to do my best and improve? And I was tempted to want to fall to that sportsman class because if I did decide to make the trip to the nationals, the chances that I would make it to the mains and the top 200 people basically trying to be the top 64 is almost this. It's just not possible this year. Maybe if I put in a little bit of extra practice in a year or two, I can hope to be come that level, but who knows that that chance um, because there's so many young outstanding pilots, notably this past week, uh, Silas pilot named Propsicle, who's like 12 or 13 years old, skyrocketed himself to the third spot on the leaderboard. He's essentially a drone racing prodigy. And so that's very impressive. But that means that at an old age, uh, deep into the 30s, do I really have a chance to do that? Well, Johnny Fly is our one remaining hope at a senior uh, person competing because he is in, I believe he's in the fourth or fifth spot right now. But back to what I was saying, do I try to get into that sportsman class? Well, I didn't. I flew my best. I improved my time by two full seconds and I skyrocketed myself to place 138. And I was like, well, there's probably little chance that I'm going to fall all the way to sportsman class now, but oh well. Um, so really the, the cost benefit for me is knowing that there's no way I can make it to the mains. Is it worth it for me to travel, you know, 12 to 15 hours across the country to participate in what essentially will be me flying five packs for a drone race? And that's a little bit hard to think about doing. But there has been quite a bit of activity on the leaderboard since that date. There has been multiple people running double headers all across the globe. People are getting qualified at this track on an alarming rate. And so I have fallen to place 182. Now there is going to be two more qualifiers in my town. So if I attend, I could potentially go and improve my time to go further into the pro class or should I stay? thinking that there is most likely going to be 22 people that are going to end up patching them. They're going to push me into the top of that sportsman class. If I'm at the top of the sportsman class, that means I will most likely qualify during that event into the mains. And I may even be able to get to the B mains, maybe even the finals. Uh, that would be nice. Maybe end up with some type of a trophy. Not that that really matters, but if I'm going to make the trip, I want to for sure be able to get the maximum number of packs per mile traveled. That leads me to another question uh, that I've been asking my local community. If in the foreseeable 12 to 15 months, I can only budget one cross country trip for FPV, should it be the nationals or should it be IO? I haven't made a long distance trip for FPV despite racing for the past or flying for the past almost four years, despite having this channel for the past year and a half. And it's probably time for me to go try to make some content and try to meet some people that I've talked to online and interacted with and just have a good time. So with that in mind, do I really want to go to nationals or not? That's the question guys. Now this is for me at kind of that, that end where I'm right kind of on the line between pro class. It's hard to think of myself being pro at any type of activity, certainly in any kind of a video game. I don't think I could be pro at it. So it's kind of cool to be able to be considered in that light. But if I want to really be able to compete and get some competition, do I belong in that sportsman class? It'll be interesting how things turn out in the next few years. I really like the agility that multi GP is displaying. They are constantly evolving the rules, evolving how the, you know, the whole structure of the racing going into nationals is working. I was a little bit skeptical when they first announced the changes to having this three lap rule. Um, but now I realize that I was wrong. Multi GP was right. This system is so much better. It allows you to really focus on your racing. The old way where you had a cumulative total, if you crashed out in two rounds, you were completely stressed because you had to fly absolutely perfectly. 
This time you have five chances, depending on how fast the track is, you may have 10 chance, you may have two chances per round because you only need to string three laps together. If you're on a track where you might get six, seven laps, you have plenty of chances. So if you are in the top 100, are you going for sure? If you're not, please answer in the comments, why not? If you're in the top 50 and you're not going, good Lord, why? Is it because you're in another country? You know, I was flying in one of the Velocidrome TBS competitions last night, and I heard on there the unmistakable voice of Granger, FPV, as seen on the UAV Futures channel. And he was tearing it up. He was right there at the top. I got knocked out in the F mains. But Granger was doing quite well, so I couldn't help to think to myself, if Granger is in the top 50 on the multi GP and he wanted to attend, it would be quite a trip for him to go all the way from Australia to Florida. So are there any sponsors that might be able to get him there? If you're in that situation, please answer in the comments. And if you're in the top 20 and you're not going, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Thanks guys.